So a quick review on our rational functions, the graphs of those, before we dive into the nasty ones. Um, so here's our parent graph, 1 over x, y equals 1 over x. Um, just know when there's an x in the denominator, that gives us asymptotes because we're going to have undefined spots of our graph. And the vertical asymptote always makes the denominator 0. So in this case, you know, x cannot be 0, so that makes a vertical asymptote, this guy right here, for the line x equals 0. And then there's always um, a horizontal asymptote, and what we'll find is there's going to be a slant asymptote as well, but our horizontal asymptote in general is y equals 0 unless there is a shift in our graph. And we'll kind of see that as we go. And we often mark these asymptotes with dotted lines. So we've looked at this already. Um, if there's a shift in the graph, so if it shifts right, that means, you know, x cannot be 2 here. So this guy shifted right 2, which means we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. We'd still have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 just because there is no shift up or down. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 6 because that would make our denominator 0. So hopefully we're getting that down. So vertical asymptotes happen when the denominator is equal to 0. And that's kind of the key that we want to get to. All right, we got all kinds of rational functions that we're going to look at. So if you look at these guys, these ones are nasty. So we're going to have to be good at our factoring, and we're actually going to bring in some long division into this to help us find our asymptotes. Okay, one important thing is if the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, the horizontal asymptote is always y equals 0. Okay, so let's look back at these ones that I have. So up top, I have a degree of 0, right? When we look at degrees, we pay attention to the variables and their exponents. So this one doesn't have a variable, so this is the 0th degree up top. Down low, there's an x to the first power, so this would be a first degree polynomial on bottom. So the numerator is smaller than the denominator. So up top, 0th degree, first degree on the bottom. So the numerator is smaller than the denominator. So if the numerator's degree is smaller than the denominator's degree, so you're just looking at the x. You know, does it have an x with an exponent that's smaller up top? So that's one important note. So looking at this guy, I look at my degrees. Zero with degree up top. This would technically be a second degree if I were to FOIL that out. So I know that there's going to be a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So I got that for sure. But sometimes there can be two vertical asymptotes, right? Anytime the denominator can be zero, that's a horizontal or vertical asymptote. So in here, I can make, I can put negative three in for x right there to make the denominator zero, and I could put two in for x right there to make the denominator zero. So that's where I have extra vertical asymptotes. I have one at x equals negative three, and I have one at x equals two, as you can see in this graph. So the key is you might have to do some factoring to predict the asymptotes. So in the red here, it says factor this denominator, sketching the asymptotes. Check the graph by using a calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. So down on the bottom, we have a quadratic, and no coefficient on the x squared, so this should just factor into a product of two binomials, so 1 over, I know it's got to be x and x in the fronts, and factors of negative 6 that add up to negative 1 would be negative 3 and 2. So I should have vertical asymptotes at x equals 3 and x equals negative 2, right? Because negative 2 would plug in here and 3 would plug in there to make that 0. So that's where I would dash them in. So x equals negative 2, right, and x equals 3. And then we'd also do any horizontal asymptotes, so that's where we check the degree. So 0th degree up top, 2nd degree on bottom, which means it's smaller up top, so I should have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And to graph this, it doesn't have to be exact, and this is where the calculator would come into play to give you a better idea of what it should look like. So I'm going to go y equals, and I put the whole denominator in the parentheses. So you can go either way. You can type your quadratic in, or you could type the factored form. I'm OK either way. It should work out. So I'm going to go x. And there we go. Here's our vertical asymptotes, our horizontal asymptote. And that'll help me kind of give it a general idea of what the graph looks like. There's really no stretch, so you could probably be a little more exact, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So something like that, something like that, and like that. All right. Not too bad. All right. There's also going to be cases when instead of having an asymptote, there's going to be something that we call a hole. So a hole occurs 
when there's the same factor, the same factor in the numerator and the denominator. So in this case, there's an x minus 3 up top and an x minus 3 on bottom, which simplifies to 1. So this is technically y equals 1. But in my original equation, my original rational function here, if I plugged in 3 for x, that would make my graph undefined, right? Because I can't have 0 in the denominator. So before we graph, you know, obviously if we were simplifying this fraction, we would just cross these bad boys off and we get y equals 1. Okay, but like I just said, it's technically undefined for that value of x where it makes the denominator 0. So it would be undefined at 3 there. So let's look at this graph. So if we enter this onto the calculator, let's take a look and see what happens here. So I'm not entering y equals 1. I'm going to enter y equals x minus 3 over x minus 3. So here's my graph. It's kind of hard to see. The easiest way to see this is on your table. So if you notice that when x is 3, there's an error, so it's undefined. If I do it as a graph, even if I zoom way in, like I'm zoomed way in here when x is 3 on my graph, and it's still hard to tell. So even if I zoom further in, Yeah, it's impossible to tell in here just because I get decimals so, so close that still work, but it's only at when x is exactly 3, so it's really hard to tell. So in order to display that onto a graph that you'll be graphing, we would do this. So this makes the line y equals 1, which comes right here, but at 3 there's a hole. So we just put an open circle at 3. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's not very good there, but we should be able to sense that x cannot be 3 for that line. So we graph it the exact same way we would normally do, but we put a circle, an open circle, where there's a hole where it's, the graph is undefined. So if I did something like this, obviously this could have been a quadratic that I got factored first. This line right here is the line y equals x plus 1, right? A y-intercept of 1, a slope of 1 over 1. But as I graph the line, there's a hole where? Right here, when we cancel these three guys, there's a hole at x equals 3, right? Because the denominator would be 0. So I'd have to put an open circle at 3 to represent that hole where the graph is undefined. So make sure when you graph these guys, put the hole in first before you simplify. So I'd write my factors just like this is here. I'd draw the hole in at 3. I'd just put a hole at 3. So I might not know where this is at until I graph my line. But then when I cancel, I got y equals x plus 1. And that's a y-intercept of 1, a slope of up 1 over 1. And then we look, oh, yeah, there should be a hole at 3 there. So when you make your line, just like that. All right, the horizontal asymptotes get a little bit trickier. So if there's a shift, like in this case, this guy moved up 2, right, this right here by that plus 2 on the outside, that means it shifted up 2. So instead of being y equals 0, it got shifted up 2. So I have an asymptote at y equals 2. So what we want to tell with that is that that's really that plus 2 being on the outside. But we're going to get rational functions written as one rational function, not separate fractions, because this is the sum of two fractions. So if I were to get a common denominator and put these over one fraction bar, I would get this. I'd get 2x plus 1 over x right there. Okay, And if we notice, up top, this is a first degree, and the bottom is a first degree. So their degrees match. Okay, so there's going to be something special about that. All right, so since the degree up top is the same as the degree on the bottom, now the asymptote is not y equals 0, right? It's not y equals 0 anymore because it got shifted up to. Now it's y equals 2. And there's something that we're going to do with this to be able to find that horizontal asymptote every time. And here it is. If the degree is not less than the degree of the denominator, the degree up top is not less, we can do some long division to help find the asymptote. So like in this case, they were the same degree. So I could do long division with these puppies. I could take 2x divided by x to figure out what the asymptote is. And in this case, since I'm only dividing by one term, I could just simplify like this and get where the x's cancel, and I'd have 2 plus 1 over x. So that one's a little easier to see that it shifted up to. But it gets trickier when there's multiple terms in the denominator. So basically, what we want to know is if the degrees match, right, if the number up top is not less than the bottom, we're going to use long division. So there'll be a horizontal asymptote if the top, if the, t the numerator degree is not greater 
than the degree of the denominator. Okay, so there'll be a horizontal one if the one up top is the same or less. So like this last one, it was the same, so I'll have a horizontal one. I had one at y equals two. Same thing with our ones before. We had horizontal asymptotes because the top was smaller. The trick is there's going to be a slant asymptote. So this is key right here. There's going to be a slant asymptote if the degree of the numerator is larger than the lar denominators. So that's kind of the new one. There's going to be something called a slant asymptote. But we're going to find it the same way. We're going to use long division. So we're going to use long division if the numerator is not less than the denominator. So if they're the same or the numerator is actually greater. So in this case, if we notice, well, let's do our vertical asymptotes first. What makes this graph undefined? Yeah, when x equals, so x cannot be 3, so that means the graph is undefined at x equals 3. So I would draw on a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Okay? To find the horizontal asymptote, we got to pay attention to the degrees. First degree, first degree. So what I need to do is I need to divide these two polynomials. So I'm going to take 2x plus 4, and I'm going to divide it by x minus 3. I'm going to use my long division. So remember, we just think, how can I get x to turn into 2x? What would I multiply by? A 2. So then I take 2 times x, which is 2x, and 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6. And then our long division is always subtraction. So 2x two minus 2x is gone, right? And 4 minus negative 6 is positive 10. I always like to change the addition and change the signs. You can do it however you'd like. And remember, to write the remainder, we always say plus... The remainder over the divisor. So that would technically be the answer there. So if you look at it, now I can tell, all right, here's a stretch here. It's undefined when x equals 3, and it shifted up 2, right? So I should have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 because it shifted up 2. So basically, whatever I have for the whole number, when I use long division, so in this case right here, my whole number was 2, that's going to tell you where the horizontal asymptote is at. And then when the degree up top is greater than the degree on bottom, so this is a second degree and a first degree, I'm still going to use long division, but now instead of having a horizontal asymptote when they're the same, right? If they're the same, I'm going to have a horizontal. When the top is greater, I'm going to have a slant asymptote instead of a horizontal. So I still do the vertical the same because that makes the graph undefined, so x cannot be 4. So that means there will be a horizontal asymptote, or sorry, negative 4, horizontal, or a vertical asymptote, but x equals negative 4. And to check for any horizontal, or in this case, slant asymptotes, because the top, the numerator's degree is greater than the denominators, I would use long division again. All right, so how do I get to x to be an x squared? I multiply by x. So I take x times x and x times 4, and then we subtract. So x squared minus x squared gone. 3x minus 4x is negative x. Always bring down your next term, so minus 1. And how do I, what do I multiply the x by to get negative x? A negative 1. So negative 1 times x is negative x, and negative 1 times 4 gives me negative 4. And remember, we always subtract, so negative x minus negative x is gone, and negative 1 minus negative 4 is really 3, because it's really add by the opposites. And then to write a remainder, which we don't really need to do, it's 3 over the divisor x plus 4. And remember, your whole number, so not the fraction at the end, so this stuff right here, x minus 1, is going to be the asymptote. So my asymptote will be y equals, well, it's just not, like in this last case, the whole number was just a number, so it was y equals 2, right? That's why it was horizontal. Whereas, like the polynomial, the whole polynomial out front is x minus 1, so my asymptote is y equals x minus 1, which makes it a slant asymptote, which means I have a y-intercept of negative 1, and I go up one, right one, down one, right one, or left one, down one, left one, and I make my dash line for there. Okay, so... To find the horizontal and the slant asymptotes, if they have one, we'd use long division, right? So if the numerator is bigger, the degree, you'll get a slant one. If they're the same, you'll get a horizontal one. If the degree up top is smaller, 
you get what? 1 at y equals 0, right, like we did in those first few examples, y equals 0.